<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have you ever been in a room with a giant spotted elephant? <laughs> you know the kind that everybody can see but pretends that they don't? Well, I've been in that room many times, and it can get a little bit awkward. So I'm going to address the elephant in this room today. You guys are probably wondering, where did I get my adorable shoes? <laughs> well, I'm a VIP member at the world's largest online shoe store. I really am. <laughs> but the reality is that it's not every day that we see a real life fembot. <laughs> I mean, fembots are a rare breed. How many people do you know who can change their height on a daily basis? <laughs> but really, when I was young and visualizing my future and all the amazing things I wanted to do and see, I never would have imagined that I would be up here on stage talking about my bionic body parts. I also never would have imagined that I would be able to handle and bounce back from all that was to come my way. At the age of 19, I had the world figured out. I had a plan, I knew where I was going, and absolutely nothing was going to stop me. My biggest concerns were gaining weight and if I had shaved my legs that day. Although I remember having a conversation with my mom where she had told my sister and I about one of her friend's neighbors, who was 19 years old at the time, who had contracted some off-the-wall disease that caused him to lose both of his legs. We didn't know what it was called, we didn't know much about it. All I knew was that it wasn't anything that I had to worry about that those were the types of things that happened to other people, the people on Dateline and Oprah, not anything that would ever happen to me. Well, that conversation affected me, because that night as I was getting into the bathtub and as I was shaving my legs, I wondered, what if I suddenly lost my legs? What would my life be like? What would I do? And the next thought that crossed my mind was, well, then get me to a bridge or a cliff as quickly as possible because I'm going over. I believed that there was no way that I would ever be able to handle anything like that. Well, strange premonition to have because that rare thing that happens to other people about a year later happened to me. I contracted the exact same bacteria, bacterial meningitis. The doctors have no idea how I got it, just that it lives on our nose and our mouth and it's contracted like the flu or the cold. So for all I know, somebody could have sneezed on me while I was at work in an elevator. But due to this little microscopic bacteria, for two and a half months, I fought for my life. And due to the septic shock that my body went into, I ended up losing both my legs below the knees and a handful of other important pieces, a spleen and a couple of kidneys. And it was so surreal. One day, I was living a life of normalcy and simplicity, one where I could just throw on a dress and a pair of flip-flops and run out the door without a care in the world. And the next, I had stepped into a life that relied on machines, mechanics, and medical innovation just in order to function and even survive. Due to the kidney failure that I was in, for a year and a half, I relied on daily dialysis. But luckily, my dad was a perfect match, and the week of my 21st birthday, we underwent the first laparoscopic kidney transplant in Nevada. So, when most people are celebrating their 21st with shots of tequila, I was celebrating mine with shots of immune-suppressive medication and 
morphine. <laughs> Not exactly how I pictured my 21st, but it was by far the best gift I could have ever received. And in addition to having to rely on machines and medicine to live, I now had to rely on mechanical legs to walk. And I remember when I saw my new legs for the first time, they looked like they were straight out of the plumbing department of Home Depot. <laughs> they were hideous. <laughs> and they had this yellow rubber foot that would absorb all of the ink from my shoes. So you can imagine, with my shoe obsession, <laughs> that after a month or so of switching different colored shoes out, my feet were a mess. They looked like a Crayola box had just thrown up all over them. <laughs> And just wanting to get back to normal, at one point, my leg maker decided to try to make my legs look real. So he covered up all of the metal with foam, and he shaped out a calf muscle, and then he shaped the ankle bones, and he connected the foam down to the foot shell, and they were looking pretty decent. And then he decided to paint them. But when he was trying to match my skin tone, he ran out of brown paint. So instead, he used black, which made my legs this just horrible shade of taupe. And here, all I was trying to do was make my legs like, look real again. And all I ended up doing from the waist down was looking like a doll with a very confused ethnicity. <laughs> And the worst part was that my friends would say, why didn't they just make your legs look real? Why didn't they paint them a real color? Because it's not that easy. <laughs> so my insurance paid my prosthetist $5,000 to make my legs look real. And within a week, I had ripped those covers clean off. <laughs> I polished the titanium ankles, and I shined the carbon fiber calves and I took out my old paints, and I painted little tattoos on my feet where the marks were. And I put on a dress, and I went out with my friends. And for the first time since this entire ordeal began, I started to feel like me again. I realized that I felt more free sharing who I was than pretending to be something that I wasn't. And I slowly began to embrace what could be. Instead of thinking of how I was limited by these legs, I started to think of the unlimited possibilities with these legs. And I learned that when I embraced the things that made me unique, that an entire universe of possibility and opportunity opened up to me. For example, at one point, I found myself hanging from the ceiling <laughs> in a custom corset, custom wig, and custom three-foot-long ice pick legs <laughs> for Motley Crue bass player Nikki Six. It was for his new book and music video. And the crazy thing is that these legs do not mimic the human form whatsoever but I felt beautiful in them. They were like the ultimate stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had legs for days. <laughs> and from there, I became a model and an advocate for Element Skateboards. For uh, This is actually an ad for a clothing line that we just started together called the Live, Learn, Grow Collection. And that's me and my nitro running legs. And currently, as one of the highest ranked female adaptive snowboarders in the world, I'm training for the US, Paral or the US snowboard team in hopes of making the upcoming Winter Paralympic Games. And I do realize that many of the jobs and the projects that I've been involved in have come because of my legs but I am not my legs. I'm the same exact Amy. Just circumstances that were outside of my control 
forced me to find out early on what I was really made of. Just like many of the athletes that I've had a chance to work with, through the organization that my boyfriend Daniel and I started together, called Adaptive Action Sports. Originally, in 2005, we set out to give youth, young adults, and wounded vets, all with permanent physical disabilities, the resources that they needed to get involved in action sports. And we do that through action sport camp, clinics, and events. But what we ended up with was an organization and a community that does so much more than that. Over time, we started to notice something amazing happening. We started to see the lines significantly being blurred between disability and ability. We were seeing athletes like Aaron Fotheringham doing backflips off of 30-foot mega ramps in his wheelchair. And we were seeing all of Aaron's fans sharing his images and his videos online and reacting to Aaron in the same way that they would react to any other big sports star. Talk about changing perspectives. What does disabled even mean when people with so-called disabilities are expressing their super abilities? Now, don't get me wrong. Although the majority of people within this community have high-tech bionic body parts, we are not superheroes. What we are are super resilient innovators. Mike Schultz, for example, another one of our friends and athletes who we work with, who made his own leg in his own garage because there were zero legs on the market that could withstand the impact from the types of sports he was doing, which was motocross and snowcross. With other legs, he would land a 70-foot jump, and his knee would explode, and bolts would just go flying everywhere. <laughs> so he decided to make a leg himself, and what an incredible leg he made. Not only does it move naturally, but it can handle those huge jumps that he takes. With this leg, Mike went on to sweep the podium at the ESPN X Games. I remember I was laying in my hospital bed, I had just lost both of my legs, and I was watching the X Games on TV. I was watching all these athletes doing all the sports that I loved, and I was thinking, if I could just see somebody like myself, somebody with a prosthetic leg, on TV right now, then I would know that everything was going to be okay. Well, I didn't see that. But what this did is it planted a little seed. And after Daniel and I started the organization, and after a lot of hard work, we were able to get adaptive motocross, adaptive skateboarding, adaptive snowcross, and adaptive snowboarding all into the winter and the summer X Games. <laughs> And just this past May, we got exciting news that our dreams of making snowboarding an official sport in the Paralympic Games finally paid off. <laughs> what we are doing with our organization is not just creating opportunities for others who have physical challenges to get involved in action sports, we are creating role models so that any person, child, adult, or wounded vet has a place to go to get the inspiration they need to not just bounce back from adversity, but to go further than they ever knew they could. And that's the big picture. It's about pushing our boundaries, changing our preconceived notions on what it means and what it looks like to be able. Because what it comes down to is we all have disabilities, each and every one of us. Some are more visible than others. But we also all have the ability to break through our challenges and define our very own super abilities. 
having prosthetic legs, <laughs> a lot of them, <laughs> and being a part of this community has taught me three important things. The first is that it's not just the technology that moves us forward, although it helps. It's the human spirit behind the technology that moves us forward. The second is that when we embrace the things that make us unique, our true and remarkable capabilities are revealed. And finally, it's embracing adversity instead of running from it that is the key difference between merely surviving or totally and completely thriving. Because we were made to bounce back, each and every one of us, and I'm living proof. At 32, I feel stronger and more alive than ever. So the next time that adversity comes knocking at the door, remember to smile and to welcome this unwanted guest like the gift that it truly is. And what we will see is that when we greet adversity with acceptance, that the stronger and the more resilient we will grow. And that is when we get to meet the real superhero, the one that lives inside our soul. Thank you. Thank you so much.